All right, y'all, we're starting a farm vlog series. It has been way too wild out here with God knows how many disasters happening on top of a drought that if we gotta deal with it, y'all do too. So we're gonna introduce you to a little bit of the farm life. We're starting by taking care of these animals. Chicken coop. We make a whole lot of cooking videos. You'll probably see them on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And these jokers are the beneficiaries of all the kitchen scraps. And by scraps, I mean food that we sometimes forget is even in the fridge. And we score some from natural grocers too. Natural grocers is awesome. So they've got a whole section all the leftover vegetables and fruits that they can't sell. I spread these out. They put them over on like a first come, first serve. Good night. Come on. It's like a first come, first serve deal. And whenever we go grocery shopping, whenever I see that cart, it's a huge score. So, yeah, so the funny thing about having chickens is when you buy them as pullets, they're supposed to be sexed. And let me tell you something, whenever you buy animals from individuals, they will always tell you, oh, these are for sure all females, no males, don't have to worry about it. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace is not the most reliable to get your people farm lie. animals from. <laughs> there bought... needs to be like a better website of people selling, selling good farm animals. So the first time we bought chickens, we first moved out here four years ago. That's where that rooster came from, but he's been awesome. He dodged a couple of bullets, actually. He was a little sketchy in the beginning, but... He needed to be kicked in the head a lot. He, he got handled. Did you hear that? What you just heard is the newest group. We picked them up at, I don't know, three days old or something. Yeah. Those two whiteheads, what's the name of those? What kind of chickens? They're salmon feverolis. They're oh. supposed to be like a creamy white color with like fluffy faces and then their Again. feathers came in dark. So I was People like, lie. okay, we'll love them still. And then- They were also supposed to be hens. They're not. Yeah, look, but they're so pretty. Like, I hope, I hope they get along so we can keep them. If not, they can either they're either going to have to go to the back pasture and learn to fend for themselves or <laughs> as the people on Facebook Marketplace say, take them to Camp Freezer, which, you know what that means. So I don't know if I could do that, but I think the back pasture might be their only option. Do we have any eggs? I got We've one got here. three eggs. There's two over here. Okay. Ooh, they're very warm. We haven't bought eggs in... About three and a half years, ever since our first group of them started laying. They um, eat awesome, so they get all of our kitchen scraps. And we've actually got another video showing, is it short? It's a short. Yeah. Showing how we make some of their feed. Ooh. See, this is the problem with having multiple roosters. They get aggressive, and the real issue is Chester, our older rooster, he he's the alpha of the he's whole deal. He's got tenure. He's going to be with us. He's not going anywhere. Oh, and they're fighting. Oh, yep. Fighting. So they did this as babies too. Those two would square up and I'm like, I really hope. The signs were there from the beginning, but yeah, they're still squaring up. It's gonna be a problem. Freaking. <laughs> That's Penny. We've had her. She's one of the original two. Her and Chester were part of our first. Y'all are vocal. They were part of our first clutch or group of pullets that we got she's been great they're best friends the simmons need to alpha you you used to be alpha and by alpha we mean when they get aggressive you get a little a little kick into the wall it okay. does straighten them out don't go crying about treating animals until you have a farm and you know exactly how they act he's really pretty can you get close to it shows colors got like those green like teal colored feathers on the side. Like he's, he's, 
He's the more aggressive one, I would say. This gray one, that is a lavender Orpington. Those are really pretty. Really, Ooh, yeah. Four of those? Yeah. And then we have a, I think it's called a creamy white bar. <laughs> we named her Wiley because she looks like the Roadrunner from Wiley Coyote. All right. You want to go check this head? Well, first, we need to give some apples to Dolly. So on our last trip to Natural Grocers, they had, I don't know, what was it, like a 10 gallon box full of apples? Yeah, we gave some to our neighbors, two, two of our neighbors, and they made applesauce out of it. Come on, guys. And surprisingly enough, we found out that our longhorns like them also. So these two longhorns, these are our pets. The one on the left is Lakota. We've had since he was like four months old. Here's Dolly. Dolly. So we've had Lakota since he was four months old. He had little tiny two inch nub longhorns coming out and now he's, I don't know, what do you think? Over six feet wide. Yeah, he's a big boy. And then this is Teddy. So we had a little brief stint in the beef cattle business. And- Oh, ooh, ooh got that one. Dolly does not share. He's... Lakota, stop. You guys get along. So anyway, Teddy right here, he's a big teddy bear, also named after Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, we were, so he, were, he was going to be beef. We were loading him up on the trailer, and I, like, just started petting him, and he let me pet him. So after that, I told Tony this one was too sweet to process. So it was actually our friend's cow, and Tony gave him money right then and there to keep Teddy. So now he's now he's our big teddy bear. And then this is Lakota. We've had him since he was a baby. And then Dolly. They get very aggressive when it comes to apples. Yeah, we're all out of apples for now. We'll get you some later. But yep. um, okay, so those are our pets. This is Maya, this is our livestock guardian. She's actually a year and a half. She has like two acres to run in that are fenced in, but it's not enough. She likes to get out, go run in the pastures, find poop to roll in, and then our neighbors over here have a swimming pool that she's discovered she likes to get into. So thankfully they're very understanding, nice neighbors. In her defense, it's been 109 degrees every single day for the last four weeks. Yeah, Texas is, is a Texas drought. summers are not where you want to be. We have no more up. grass. Everything's dead. Right now we're checking in on this Euro mount. So this one sold. We yep. just have to finish cleaning it up. We hit it with a bunch of bleach. Um, the horns are being polished. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a really pretty one. Sure, we do have one. That's really cool though. This guy is the biggest one we've ever ever seen in our entire life. He was somebody's trophy steer and he is 92 inches. He's heavy. He's 92 inches tip to tip. So he's like an elephant. But we're gonna we're gonna keep this one for ourselves. Um, Tony is 6'3 for reference. So yeah, he's he's gonna go on our wall. It's it's pretty cool. It's um Longhorns uh Longhorn Euro mounts are a really cool process. Their colors after you sand down their horns come out true and you never know what you're gonna get. Is that the nose piece? Mm -hmm. So the nose pieces are really fragile on these and they pop off really easily. But it's no issue, we can just glue that back on. So that'd be very cool. Okay. Maya would love nothing more than to chew on some of those. <laughs> so we're gonna take this one. So we've Horns got eggs and a deadhead. To farm life. Yep. <laughs> the really funny thing is neither of us grew up on a farm or ranch doing any of this, but we've always loved animals and the outdoors and 
had the opportunity to buy this place, completely transformed it. It was a dump when we first bought yeah, it. Yeah, there, I mean, there's chain link fences all through here. This was in fact um, with weed. Totally transformed the place. It's been, it has been a labor of love. <laughs> We've spent many weekends out here just fixing, repairing things, making it what it is now. There's our RV over there. Probably our favorite thing out here. This farm is for sale even after the whole remodel, frame out, restoration, everything. We got a brand new house out of it and we still just, we want to be in the mountains. So the house is for sale. It's been for sale for about two months now. Yep. Um, and so, when that happens, we're heading west. Yeah. Not sure what state, but we're heading west. It's bittersweet, but it definitely, we did all we could here and it is going to be time to move to the mountains. So. All right, so we're going to try to get this cleaned up today. Mm -hmm. We soaked the head, took off the hide. There's just some pieces here that are just going to pull off. Um, and then we're going to bleach it a little bit more, let it dry out. I got to finish <laughs> polishing the horns and we'll be good. Bugs just pouring out of here. It's not glamorous. Oh my God. It's crazy. Just know that when y'all go to restaurants and they've got these up on the walls, they start out disgusting. But yeah. Next, it's not we'll come pretty. back with this pretty much nearly finished up with the horns on it. Yep. We'll show you the finished deal. Cool. Hey, pretty. <laughs> So these bugs in here, they do all the work, but they're pretty disgusting. So when you first get the heads back from the processor, we wrap them in a big contractor bag, put them on top of that loafing shed that's all metal. It gets really hot, helps everything decompose. And these bugs, and they all find their way in there. But one of the biggest pains afterwards is getting all the bugs out of there. They find their way into the horn cores, the brain cavity, the nasal cavity, everything. So, I don't know, we probably had like 500 so come gross. out already. Yeah, it's disgusting. Keep oh my gosh. <laughs> God bless. Just come out of here like a salt shaker. So, I think I got about 90% of the cartilage off here. We're going to hit it with the pressure washer one more time, spray it with bleach, and then one more day of hanging just on top of the, the metal shed and some heat should do the trick and um, hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. Mm -hmm. and it should be good to go. Just get more of these out. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh. I'm so glad you do the dirty job. I do the fun part. I get to sand the horns, which takes a long time because they're like fingernails and it's pretty thick. But this guy was like all brown. And then once we sanded it down, he's got like this off-white colored, really cool transition into the black tips. So we're about done with that. And then we will gloss them, gloss the head, and we'll be ready to go. <laughs> he gets the fun part. <laughs> oh, nice. It's quite satisfying though. There's really no super quick, easy way to do these. We've done the, the boiling method and that turns into a huge mess anyway. So we found that these contractor bags, they work best. It's the same thing that we'll probably do this hunting season. I will say we have learned if you can take a knife and cut the hide off, mm -hmm. that'll save a bunch of aggravation later because almost every single one of the ones that we had if the hide didn't fall off completely we had to go in soak them like we did with this one in a big bucket to loosen up that leather as well as uh, any of the cartilage on there to pull it off but the contractor bags and letting the bugs do all the work 
really helps a lot. Plus, we really like the natural bone finish mm -hmm. that you get by letting these dry out. It's really cool. So, yeah. Just a day in the farm life. Yeah. Cut it. Yep. So these horns are probably about, just about finished being sanded, right? Yeah, they're, they're done sanding. Just have to gloss them now. So this is a, this is a special one for sure. He's really pretty. Let's throw these onto the skull so we can see what it's gonna end up looking like. Okay. Sure, I remember, I think he goes this way. So this one's already pre-sold. We we're getting it all finished for the girl that bought it. Probably has one more day. Mm -hmm. He's really pretty. Yeah, this looks really good. Cool, okay. So we'll see the finished product tomorrow. Longer than expected because we had some hide stuck on here which sounds lovely but took a little bit for that to get off but after that Tony got it cleaned off really well and we got it glossed up so we did probably like five layers of gloss so he's nice and shiny um, he turned out so cool we always ask people if they want us to paint the head white. Some people like that classic look, but we really prefer the natural bone color. It's just so unique. So um, we sold this to a girl in Montana. So we're going to be shipping that out tomorrow, but she liked the natural bone color too. So we're super happy with how this guy turned out. So you it's really it up fun and show process. Them? Yeah, we'll show you guys. I think he measured out to be 52 inches tip to tip so their TV was 55 inches and they wanted it to be just a little bit below that so this one turned out perfect and again like his colors the creamy to the black tip is so cool yeah this was totally self-taught we did not grow up doing this but you watch enough YouTube videos and have enough failures to figure it out so we did good